I'm Judge Douglas Ginsburg, and I've made it my mission to give America what I think is a much needed civics lesson. Together with isit.org, we're providing video materials at no cost to students, teachers, anyone who wants to become an American citizen. We'll go into the compromises, the history, the politics that shaped our government and our society. So join me at civicsfundamentals.org to be informed, amused, and sometimes amazed. And I hope you'll enjoy the videos as much as I enjoyed making them. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, Judge Hitzberg. Happy Civic Awareness Month. <laughs> <laughs> well, to you and all of Las Vegas, too. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me this morning uh, to, to discuss about civic fundamentals. Uh, you have a mission to give Americans a civics lesson. Did you have an experience where civics was lacking? About half the people one encounters these days uh, don't have a basic knowledge of our government and, and what their uh, responsibilities and rights are as citizens. When I was filming a more or less perfect union for public television year before last, um, we had interviews with the man on the street and it was shocking, but about half the people could not name the three branches of our government. Uh, they had uh, uh, no grasp of, the, uh, of their rights or the First Amendment beyond freedom of speech. Um, even, even freedom of religion or of the press was something that very few people mentioned when asked about the Bill of Rights or, or certainly uh, understood in any way. So yes, it was quite shocking. And I'm not comfortable uh, living in a society where people who vote uh, don't know anything really about government. And that's become increasingly a problem as the last few generations have not uh, really gotten much of instruction in school. Yeah, if you don't know your rights, then how do you know when they're threatened or they're being taken away? Well, that, that's exactly right. And what happens to uh, a public that is, uh, is not aware of its rights is that they, uh, they do end up being infringed. Um, there was a... Uh, a 19th century uh, Irish judge who said, um, say, how do you put it? He said, uh, it is the common fate of the indolent to see their rights fall prey to the active. And that's, that's just where we are. It's a risk. And it's a risk that uh, our, our government and our people should not be taking. And judge, you know, I'm Generation X. So I was growing up as a little boy in the 70s. We had civics class. I remember it distinctly. They taught us how to be an American. Yeah, absolutely. How a bill becomes a law, for instance. I think we all were, were taught that in some detail. Uh, and it's important to understand that. But today, uh, very few people, or certainly a minority, do. Civics education uh, for maybe three decades, maybe more, has gotten uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, rare and, and squeezed into a small box and then eliminated entirely in many school curricula. So what I want to do and what we're doing here with Civics Fundamentals is um, making it easy, making it possible for teachers to use good materials that uh, teach civics. And um, I'm very proud of it. It's 102 minute videos uh, at, um, at civicsfundamentals.org. And it's totally free for the teachers, for the students. Indeed, it doesn't have to be a teacher or students. Anyone who wants to uh, improve their knowledge of civics. Uh, we're using the 100 questions that, were, uh, that are on the test that immigrants have to take in order to become a US citizen. And uh, certainly uh, we would like American people to know, uh, our citizens to know at least as much as a, a foreigner has to learn to become a citizen. <laughs> but right now, a recent immigrant to our country knows more about our government than those of us who were born here. Well, Judge, I, you know, I, hope I, I hope I don't embarrass myself, but could you give me a few questions? Could you test my civics? knowledge and see if I know anything or? Oh, sure. Let's see. Um, Jeffrey, what are the, uh, the question on the, on the exam is, uh, name a U.S. territory. Uh, Guam. <laughs> okay. Now, that's, that's fine. It turns out there are five U.S. territories. So in the, if a person's just studying to the exam, all they need to do is memorize the answers, including Guam, for that question. Yeah, like, but in two and a half minutes on the video, <laughs> we can ex explain, well, what is a territory? Right. Uh, how many are there? How did we acquire them? How many of our states used to be territories? I mean, that's a fairly important point to understand just generally that uh, territories were 
a pathway to statehood for much of the country. Yeah, the Louisiana the territory, probably the most famous Louisiana territory. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so uh, in the video, we show how the uh, using a map, you know, how the U.S. acquired territories over time. Okay. Uh, and explain that and then how they ultimately became states. How about so, another one? Uh, it's not teaching <laughs> the answers to the exam. It's teaching yes. some, uh, uh, you know, asking, well, why is that? Why is that the answer? What's the history behind it? What's the rationale? Um, and that's that's much more important than just memorizing the answer. No, absolutely. How about another one? Give me one more. Give me another quiz here. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what are the two branches of the Congress? Uh, legislative and executive. Oh, no, wait. Oh, oh Jeffrey. No, wait, wait, wait. No, legislative. Uh, the two branches of Congress. Oh, you mean the Senate and the House of Representatives? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. That's right. right. Okay. Okay. It's early, it's Judge. Question, <laughs> it's early. <laughs> the Senate. And House. So here's the question. Yeah, yes. That's the answer, right? Yes. So those are the. That's the answer. But what? Why is that? Why do we have two houses of Congress? You know, in countries that have a parliament, they don't have two parliaments. They have just one. Right. And the answer is, as explained in the video, that it was in order to make it harder to pass laws because the framers were of the view as as most of us today should be that it's better to fail to pass a good law than it is to make it easy to pass a bad law right and so they set up various barriers and made it difficult two different chambers composed in different ways with different terms of office different constituencies for a congressman or a senator and even that's not enough unless the president signs it or they get a two-thirds majority in both houses. The framers made it difficult to pass a law. And I, I think it's important that people, like students and young people, understand that it's not supposed to be just, you know, snap your fingers and get another law. Right. It's called gridlock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, gridlock has its advantages. It's, the question is gridlock compared to what? Right, right. We don't want permanent gridlock. But uh, we do want these checks and balances that keep us from being uh, overridden with too many laws of which many would be bad. Absolutely. All right, Judge, we have time for one more quiz. I got to redeem myself because, you know, I'm a smart <laughs> guy. So give me one more question and then we'll see if I would get you. Know, I love the way you're approaching this, Jeffy, because it's kind of a game. And we did that yes. with the with the videos as well. We award points and, and so on. So uh, what's another question? What is what is Alexander Hamilton? well known for uh he was our first treasurer also he was our first right but he was also uh he wrote the declaration of independence also now you had it the first time he was the tre the first treasurer right um secretary of the treasury i should say yes um and he did a number of other things which we go uh, which we go into in the video um he arranged for the financing of the uh, of the revolutionary war debt um he was one of the three co-authors of the Federalist Papers, which were very influential in, uh, in uh, encouraging people to vote you know, to, in favor of adopting the Constitution. And he also was an uh, incredible star. Things, right? And he was an incredible star of a great Broadway musical also. <laughs> uh, that's, that's right. I'm sorry he didn't live to see it. <laughs> but, you know, in civics fundamentals, we can do a lot, but we can't time travel. Right. <laughs> we do have uh, we do have some impersonators for uh, for Madison and Washington and so on, which really adds some spice to it. The whole thing is fun. I must say that right. learning civics can be fun as well as educational. Well, you know, Judge, you know, I'm having flashbacks of my college days because I am college educated because of these early morning classes. I'm getting Thomas Jefferson mixed up with Alexander Hamilton. I just I'm I'm like on Jeopardy. I'm answering too quickly here, but. And, you know, thank you so much for what you're doing for America and educating our, 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 our American citizens, because it's so important to understand how democracy works if we're going to allow it to flourish and to uh, to succeed. So thank you for your education thank, thank programs. You, I, I, any opportunity to talk about civicsfundamentals.org, I appreciate. Thanks very much, Jeffrey. Take care. Thank you.